modern Satanism can be understood looking at the origins and philosophy of his two main groups, the Church of Satan and the Temple of Set. Lavey founded the Church of Satan in 1966. He pronounced himself the Black Pope and proclaimed 1966 the first year of the Satanic Age. The Church of Satan is based on hedonistic indulgence or sins of the flesh. There are three major categories of rituals in the Church of Satan. Sexual rituals to fulfill a desire, compassionate rituals to help another person, and destructive rituals to annoy or display anger. After leaving the Church of Satan, Aquino founded the Temple of Set in 1975. It is based on metaphysical revelations from the Egyptian entity Set. The Temple of Set reverses the magical potential of the individuals, and all Setians are on individual magic journey, which in the Temple of Set there are no prescribed rituals or dogmas, and no specific vows. According to Drury, the Church of Satan was, in one sense, an offshoot of Californian show business, a form of institutionalized party rivalry, whereas the Temple of Set encompassed a broader esoteric domain and is based on considered philosophical responses to the magical universe. Many people see Satanism as an unhealthy, even criminal enterprise that hurts all those who encounter it. In this view, Satanists are likely to be child abusers murderers and they are constantly looking for others to harm or to recruit. Children and adolescents are the most vulnerable to the seduction of the devil's grabs. According to Lowney, the psychiatry description that Satanists are dysfunctional or sick comes almost entirely from three sources. Hospitalized teenagers diagnosed as Satanic practitioners, prisoners whose crimes were said to have been inspired by Satanism, and ex-Satanists, many of whom subsequently converted to Christianity. Those who hold to this explanation proclaim that American moral values, such as religious faith and family unity, are breaking down, and that Satanism has flourished in such a morally bankrupt social environment. Similarly, Victor and Lippert state that the claims and rumors about satanic ritual abuse are based on the demonologies of two belief systems, Christian traditionalists and social conservative. According to the system, Satanists are trying to spread immorality in order to destroy the moral order of American society, leading to Satan's takeover of the world. Satanic ritual abuse is seen as being one manifestation of the work of Satan and his followers. Broadly suggests that a satanic subversion ideology gives shape to contemporary anxieties and fears that arise from rapid social change. It functions to create a metaphor to this diffuse cultural anxiety by naming the problem, giving it a human cause and locating it outside of mainstream society. Midway states that the panic about ritualized abuse started with the now discredited recovered memories of child abuse. The combination of Christian fundamentalism and of Winfrey style psychotherapy led to hundreds of people in the United States who had false memories to believe that they were victimized by their parents in satanic cults. However, Midway shows that religious fundamentalists have done more practical harm than Satanists with low charge exorcists. According to Victor, the tendency of the media to report sensationalistic stories about satanic ritual abuse and cultic crimes has contributed to a widespread belief in the reality of ritualistic abuse. Despite this satanic panic, studies like those of Brownlee, Victor and Lafontaine have shown that there is no empirical evidence to support allegations of widespread, organized, multigenerational satanic crime. Teenagers are said to be drawn into an interest in occult ritual activity through a prior interest in heavy metal rock music. The graffiti, vandalism and altar sites are usually mistaken for evidence of teenage Satanism. Most of them are adolescence legend trips, which functions as a kind of ritual for adolescents to prove their courage so teenagers can test their anxieties about challenging adult authority. Occult related Juvenile crimes are products of adolescence legend trips. According to Lowney, clothing styles, haircuts and satanic belief are constructed by Satanist teenagers to critique the dominant culture and create a new self-identity. They choose this change as his way of managing the alienation they found in mainstream society. 
According to Victor, satanic belief can be used as a deviant ideology to justify aggression. Almost all teenagers who even profess to be satanists lack any elaborate belief system. Instead, they have fabricated a deviant ideology in order to justify their underlying personality dispositions to express aggressive hostility or justify rebellion from adult social restrictions. These are pseudo-satanists, delinquent rather than teenage satanists. Pseudo-satanism crime flourish among groups of psychologically disturbed adolescents who use magic ritualism to deal with their psychological problems. According to Beck, adolescents who see themselves as being evil create a psychological environment consistent with their self-concept. It is quite likely that many pseudo-satanist teenagers are rebelling from an overly restrictive traditional religious family background, which emphasizes that the world is an evil place. Rock and heavy metal music have since their inception been accused of being satanic. In the late 60s, the Rolling Stones with their single Sympathy for the Devil engaged in a flirtation with Satan. In the 70s, the three primary metal bands, Black Sabbath, Deep Purple and Led Zeppelin were seen as the personification of evil. Alice Cooper was a poster boy for Satanism through the 70s. He established the use of the aesthetics of evil in rock and many bands followed his lead in adopting similar trappings. British metal band Iron Maiden were accused of being Satanists after the title track of their 1982 album Number of the Beast. As a response, the band included a ridiculous backward message about a monster in the track Still Life. Heavy metal was in the center of the storm during the satanic ritual abuse scare, with a number of prominent bands accused of using backmasking and subliminal messages to influence their listeners. Two Arizona teenagers attempted suicide in 1985 after listening to the Judas Priest album Stained Glass. The band were prosecuted for causing suicide with a backwards message apparently saying I took my life on the track beyond the realms of death. Similarly, Ozzy Osbourne was prosecuted over his track Suicide Solution. British black metal band Venom inserted backward messages on their track In the League with Satan. They were widely regarded as a genuine devil worshippers. The band adopted and immortalized the Baphomet and inverted pentagram of the Church of Satan, placing both images on the cover of their album Welcome to Hell, helping to popularize the myth that both images were traditional satanic symbols. Swedish Bathory and Danish Merciful Fate joined Venom in the move towards greater extremes. Both bands had a heavy focus on the devil. King Diamond, lead singer of Merciful Fate, was a long-term member of the Chart of Satan. American thrash metal band Slayer, with their greater technical ability and blistering sound tempos, provide a more terrifying vehicle for the devil's music than early black metal's performance. Marilyn Manson was reverend of the Church of Satan. He quickly became the highest profile Satanist ever. Although Manson's contact with the Church was minimal, being a priest of the Church of Satan boosted Manson's notoriety. In the early 90s, Norwegian black metal scene attracted international attention for his involvement in a combination of murder, arson, and apparent devil worship. Bands like Mayhem, Bursum, and Imperial instigated a series of church burnings in Norway as a radical means of protesting the cultural dominance of Christianity and his supplanting of pagan Nordic values. After being charged with burning churches, Mike Ernest, Bursum founder, was arrested and convicted for murdering his bandmate Euronymous. With Mike Ernest's quick change from Satanist to Nazi, the black metal identity became available to bands who functioned to promote a political agenda, fascism. Over the course of the next few years, bands tried to appear more evil than the next. Satanism challenged those people who were raised in mainstream religions to rethink about their old prejudices and preconceptions. Unfortunately, too many people are more interested in bashing other people's religion than in truly seeking after wisdom.